Okay, welcome everybody to um, this edition of Conversation from Rome. I'm here with a very special guest and friend of the Acton Institute, Federico Eichberg, and he's one of the directors at the Italian Ministry of Economic Development. And before we get into the questions real quickly, which is three um, bullet points about Federico's background, uh, he studied political science at La Sapienza, the University of Rome. But he's also, um, he also studied in the United States at the University of Notre Dame in Indiana. So, and that's quite a prestigious Catholic university for our Christian audience here. And um, he's been working at the ministry for several years. I'm not quite sure how many years. Well, uh, uh, 20 <laughs> next year. 20 years, for as, for as long as I've been in Rome. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Perfect coincidence. So I, I have, 20 years of economic tracking time under my belt here in Italy, and so does he, but in a much more expert capacity. And by the way, uh, Federico's written a fascinating book, um, which in Italian is called the, um, the, the Domani Appartiene a Noi, The Future Belongs to Us. And this is perhaps a prophetic book, which I recommend you all to read, at least those you can read in Italian. And the, the subtitle of the book is 150 Steps to Exit Presentism. Short and that's the technical term, terms of yeah. having a, a bloated workforce within companies. Yeah. Um, Italy has probably not just have hiring problems, but also firing problems. So when they accumulate uh, a workforce, they tend to have a, a burden of financial structures, including their internal budget. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go straight to our questions. I have five or six questions lined up for Federico. And um, first thing I just want to ask him, just give us a brief overview of the Italian economy, not just how it currently is, but what it was like just before the crisis hit. Yeah. Well, uh, Michael, first of all, um, thank you uh, for this um, nice opportunity to exchange some ideas and uh, yeah. my warmest greetings to all the friends uh, who are uh, following us uh, through the media. Um, I take the opportunity to say that uh, for, uh, for Italy, having a, uh, let's say, a strong and continuous relation with, with the US and, and with our friends, uh, uh, let's say, who follow also the inspiration of Acton Institute is very good because we need a good, uh, let's Thank say, uh, uh, inspiration of good Christian values with a look to free market economy uh, and, and inspiration. So um, it's, yeah. it's hopefully it's, it's, it's the beginning of uh, more and more intense. Yeah, that's our drumbeat at the Acton Institute. We're, we're beating louder and harder these days. We're, our mission yeah. has never been so important. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I come to your point uh, um, just to give you two, three figures and then some sort of uh, more humanistic, let's say, views yeah. beyond the figures. I mean, as, as you're all aware, uh, Italy is uh, one of the three key economies of the Eurozone. Um, we have a GDP of roughly 1.7 trillion euros, uh, yeah. which is basically 16, 17% of the Eurozone. Um, our, um, let's say, our uh, strength is, is the fact that we are the second manufacturer of Europe. That's, that's something to be aware of because yeah. and the first uh, our, is Germany no yeah the first is yeah. Germany uh, but Italy does have uh, very good performances in all the key manufacturer industries we are well known in Italian we say for the four a so uh, agroalimentare the food and beverages uh, arredo so everything related to furniture light house in general yeah. um, abbigliamento which is uh, food let's say clothing, uh, wearing, uh, let's say uh, textile, footwear. Yeah. Kind yeah. Of thing. Fashion. A fashion in general, exactly. Uh, but also the accessories. So um, the uh, glasses and the uh, jewelry, everything related to, let's say, the person. So the fashion related to the person in general, not only uh, textile. And the fourth A is uh, automazione. So everything related to machinery, mechanics, yeah. which yeah. is both vehicles uh, with the FCA yeah. being one largest groups yeah that was actually my first uh in employment in italy i worked for okay. a, a software automation company in genoa or right, yeah. yeah yeah i mean we 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 know uh, quite well what means for example the industry of packaging all these kind of things so linked to machinery um then of course we have so these are the four a's are the backbone of our economy 
Then we have some uh, specific drivers of growth. Uh, one of them, for example, is pharmaceutical. Italy is the largest producer of pharmaceutical in Europe. Yeah, few people are aware of it. Uh, the shipping industry, um, so uh, well, uh, shipbuilding industry, more correct. Uh, yeah. Forty-seven percent of cruise uh, ships are built yeah. in Italy. Yeah, uh, again, like in general, my wife worked for um, a shipping company, and her brother works for a shipbuilding company, uh, yeah. creating galleys. I mean, Fincantieri is considered the number one in the world, with no doubt yeah. about it. Um, plus, uh, as you know, we are the number one uh, country in terms of uh, the cultural heritage uh, in, in our territory, uh, which makes, of course, a, a big industry of tourism, but also of, uh, let's say, um, of uh, um, uh, a, a, a narrative of art. I mean, we, we do have uh, some very interesting experiments of uh, new media related to to um, to uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the to preserving and to, um, let's say, the, 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 somehow uh, developing a narrative on our uh, cultural heritage and our yeah. religious heritage. Uh, on our thermal tourism, there is a lot that yeah. Italy is doing. Yeah. On that. But people often forget how um, much of the academic industry is built around your cultural heritage. Absolutely. For example, Absolutely. in in Italy, I think uh, there is about 140 American universities established here on a full time basis. Yeah, I, do, I didn't you know that figure, but sounds realistic. Yeah. yeah, that was my second employment. I moved to Rome from Genoa to. Uh, run the University of Dallas uh, Rome program uh, okay, out excellent. in the Castelli Romani. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, those are the typical things you cannot delocalize. I mean, yeah. <laughs> cultural heritage is in Italy. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Landscape. let's not forget about Jesus. You know, we have we have his, okay. the Vicar of Christ here in Italy. Yeah, so the that, Catholic Church is based in Italy. I mean, it has some economic, economic power. <laughs> right, right. Although not uh, formally in Italy, because it's in an autonomous state, the, the smallest state in the world, but yeah. still <laughs> is within We like it. to think so. Us Italians right. like to think more. But also don't forget another uh, driver of growth, which is very realistic uh, and very concrete, uh, which is the fact that Italy is a sort of Saudi Arabia of renewable resources. Oh, okay. So um, Italy has uh, matched the um, the as complied with the uh, parameters given in the perspective of the a, a EU, EU policy yeah. of, of uh, renewable resources. I mean, first by far among the EU economies. Eh? I mean, yeah, okay, has, okay, we, yeah. So you get, get kind of a bill of health in terms of um, you know why it's the eighth largest economy in the world. It's you know it's myriad industries uh, which are also robust. Yeah and long lasting and durable. But what what is the Achilles economic, uh, Achilles Hill? What is it, um, what well, makes it are, weak going through this crisis? Yeah, there are uh, at least uh, uh, three elements that we should keep in mind. Okay. Uh, the first one is the enormous public debt. Uh, the enormous public debt that Italy has uh, developed throughout the decades um, for many reasons, but I think the most interesting one is to look at it in a historical and geopolitical perspective. Italy had the strongest communist party uh, in the West. Okay. Um, which uh, means that uh, many, I mean, if you calculate, if you look at the parliamentarian acts, the, 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 the proceedings of the, all, all the meetings in the parliament, you will realize that uh, during the, what we call the first republic, so from basically 46 until 92, 93, yeah. uh, roughly 80% of the laws were voted both by the majority, Christian Democrats and small allies, and yeah. the Communist Party. Why that? Because uh, it's a typical strategy. If you want to defeat your enemy, just fatten uh, the enemy. <laughs> you know, if you use this expression, ingrassalo in Italian. So, yeah. so it, there was a sort of convergence with the Communist Party in order to deprive the Communist Party of its revolutionary um, spirit. Yeah. Uh, but it meant a lot of public expenses. I mean, yeah. uh, we yeah, were. I think part of the part of the fattening is to induce um, kind of coronary issues, <laughs> heart issues. <laughs> Get them fat so they have heart attacks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, that, that, that's exactly the point. I mean, uh, so yeah. the, the, the we literally risked uh, uh, to become a Soviet uh, uh, country. In, yeah. In, you know, in uh, after the uh, attempt uh, to Toyatti's life, there was a kind of a revolution yeah. starting in Italy, and in April '48, yeah. 
as you know, 18th of April uh, 48, uh, in, in, a, in a dramatic vote, the Italian uh, population was called to choose between being a Soviet country and being yeah. a Western democracy. Yeah. Uh, so it's. Uh, yeah, I, I've heard all the stories. My father in law was a Carabinieri in the anti Red Brigade squad. <laughs> exactly. I mean, oh, yeah. why did we have the Red Brigades? Because Italy had a strong Communist Party, and the fact that the Communist Party had kept a, an open dialogue with the Democrazia Cristiana throughout the decades. Yeah. Uh, created a, a, a strong sentiment of, uh, of malaise uh, in some uh, um, sort of uh, far left uh, circles that then developed also this. Uh, and in fact, they kidnapped Aldo Moro, who was the, the theoretical yeah. of this dialogue between the Christian Democrats and okay. the parliament. Anyway, it's taking too long for the answer. Just to say the public debt is number one, is, yeah. is the enormous. Uh, um, uh, the second, so they're all D. So one is debt, the second is the dimension. So the size of the enterprise. In Italy, unfortunately, I mean, one has to be realistic, 95% of the enterprises has less than eight employees. So we, have, we really have micro enterprises. And the fact that they are micro enterprises, it means that they, not, they do not innovate and internationalize as much as they should do. I see. So, so that's the second, uh, let's say, uh, reason for the, uh, the, the slow pace of, of Italian growth. The third is divario, we say, so the third D, yeah. which is the gap between the north, especially the north, well, the north in general, northwest for big industry, northeast for small industry, and the rest of the country, especially the south. Yeah. Uh, but we're working on the three Ds, yeah. so I'm and confident. I think there's a fourth that you're missing, and you know, you wrote a book about it. Well, yeah, it's <laughs> rigid workforce and the yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. That's that's a that's a problem we have. But uh, in general, I mean, how I see that is the um, the point that we should. It's it's also linked to a fourth one, which is demography. Somehow, yeah, of course, we should yeah. uh, have a, a wider change of, of workforce, a, a, a much uh, uh, more elastic market, also open to new generation to come in and to old generation to come out. To go out. I mean, it's it's a kind of renewal that we should uh, okay. we should uh, uh, try to promote. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, my next question is: uh, Now that we've had at least six weeks to um, reflect on economic development and how uh, Italy, like most of the world's top economies, is is um, literally in a free fall, economic free fall. Um, what do you recommend as we go back to this kind of gradual? Um, re-entry into the economy? What are some basic recommendations? I mean, should we be careful? Should we be robust entrepreneurs? Should we be risk takers left and right with new startups? I mean, there's gonna have to be some real, there's gonna be creative destruction as well as as um, kind of the status quo industry as well. Yeah. So I, I, I'll answer you with two different uh, focuses. I mean, one okay. is basically where we find the resources the money, <laughs> and okay, second, yeah. on, on which sectors should we focus? Uh, where do we find the money? I mean, few people are aware of the um, unbelievable solidity of the so-called richness of Italian families. The private, uh, let's say, wealth in Italy is one of the highest in Europe. Um, roughly 80% of Italians own a house. Yeah. So we calculate that about 9 trillion uh, euros are owned by families. Uh, so, uh, one of the keys for uh, the, uh, let's say, uh, restart of Italian economy after this, uh, uh, let's say, uh, period of, uh, of, 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 of uh, forced uh, close uh, is the uh, idea of, uh, of putting resources uh, in uh, uh, long-lasting bonds that could finance, with, with no taxation, that could okay. finance a fund for enterprises to restart. Yeah, uh, I've been one of the boys. Is very, I mean, minimally in my in my in my uh, uh, let's say uh, job to to kind of emphasize on that. Yeah, mm, we do need uh, all the social uh, interventions that we have done up to now. The so-called casa integrazione. We yeah. do need the six hundred euros per mm, per worker and so on and so forth. But we also need uh, uh, resources to invest that come out of a commitment of Italians on a long-lasting and tax-free, um, let's say, uh, uh, bond emission. Yeah. Um, 
because we do own an important uh, uh, wealth uh, in, in Italian families. Okay. Um, what's, what's the second uh, recommendation? Yeah, on, is on, on which focuses? I mean, Italy, because of many reasons, also geographical reasons, has developed a vocation to um, innovate uh, in a, in a uh, environmentally friendly way. For example, we are number one in the so-called wave energy. So the energy produced by the waves of the sea. Uh, we have developed uh, a specific, uh, uh, let's say, um, uh, skill on that. Um, the largest Italian enterprises have a, a joint venture on that. Uh, the small islands next year will be all served by wave economy, just to give you an idea, or battery economy. So we, we do have a, uh, or um, electric, mo electric mobility. Italy has developed a lot of these skills in the, uh, let's say, um, perspective of, of sustainable um, development. Yeah. So that's a key one. Key number two uh, is, as we said before, uh, investing in uh, uh, high tech, uh, let's say, um, uh, uh, hospitality uh, economy. Uh, which means uh, investing in, uh, in all these multimedia um, ways to introduce to Italian cultural heritage, uh, uh, to uh, Italian, uh, let's say, landscape, and so on and so forth. Number three is to uh, try and, and get new markets for our traditional four A's that I mentioned before. So it's a more aggressive policy of export. Italy exports 550 billion euros per year, which is not bad. It's basically one third of our sorry half a trillion yeah i mean half yeah, a sounds better half a trillion <laughs> half a trillion sounds sounds better yeah definitely um so it's 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 quite it's quite something yeah it's quite something uh so we we do have a, a large potential why because uh, 75 percent of this export goes to uh transatlantic markets yeah exactly so we have a lot to exploit uh, in other directions so speaking of trillions um the eu is has just doubled its euro bond from 500 billion to 1 trillion. And how is that going to play out in terms of uh, economic recovery, if at all? Uh, you mean the, the hypothesis of having uh, euro bonds? Yeah, euro bond, euro kind of yeah. bailout bond. I, yeah. I personally, I'm, I, as I said, I'm more in favor of uh, uh, national bonds that can uh, rely on richness of, of on, on wealth of Italian families. Mm -hmm. I'm not a particular fan of this eurobond campaign. Yeah. Uh, um, for many, many reasons, for too many reasons. I think that the European Central Bank is already doing its job in keeping the uh, uh, the the, uh, the interest the interest rate uh, low. Um, yeah. So I, I don't see any particular, I, I, I know the current government made a sort of flag, uh, flagship battle for Eurobonds, but I, I don't sure. see really the point. Yeah, well, it seems, you know, Europeans are trying to scrape up money from wherever they can. I just read before calling you on, on, on Zoom that, um, you know, Germany is filing a 130 billion claim for damages from China. And the same article said that the France and UK and the US are probably going to follow similar claims. Yeah. for um, release of that, the so-called China virus. Yeah. Uh, is that even feasible or is that, you know, is that just a, a malicious threat which is going to amount to nothing? What we need first is the evidence, <laughs> of course. Right. Once we have the evidence, we can decide what to do. Well, uh, I mean, we do know that, that China delayed in its um, information. I think that's, is, part, is, that's I mean, part of the claim. I is think this is... Of precious weeks and... Yeah. Um, this but may have hurt the economy even worse on the flip side. So if we had shut down in January, we'd still shut down now. Just think of the other trillions that would we be looking for, scraping together. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was better that we didn't find out. <laughs> Maybe it's yeah, better we don't I, know about it at all. You know? It's a double sign. That's one of the hypotheses. With you know? two sides. I mean, it's a coin with two sides. Uh, uh, yeah. Had we closed in January, maybe we, we would be really now. Yeah. No, there's the old English motto, which you don't, what you don't know won't hurt you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, <laughs> if, if we had no one had known about this virus, we maybe thought it was some crazy flu worse than usual flu, but we wouldn't have shut down economies for, for fear. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that the moment we have an evidence uh, for sure of the fact that China didn't uh, communicate everything, that's, that's uh, for sure a mistake and we, we will have to work on, on that yeah. to, to understand it better. What we don't know exactly is who generated and how and, and what. 
the yeah. moment we know that, I think it's absolutely fair to ask China, uh, I mean, <laughs> what's, what's their view on that? What's the view on the fact that a laboratory in China, if this is the case, has created the largest crisis of the world after World War II? Yeah, you know, some of my um, lefty friends on social media, I hate to call them lefty friends, I guess that means I'm a righty guy, but you know, they're anti-Trump, anti-market, anti-development, they're quite happy to shut down and roam around the, uh, their woods and living in their log cabin, I so to speak, going back to nature. But one of the things that they say, there's some truth to what they're saying is that, look, US actually didn't have this, you know, such an excellent economy. And if it did, why would we be suddenly going poor all at once? Why, for example, as I read in another article this morning, in one of the richest cities in the United States, San Antonio, one of the richest economies also in Texas, you know, 10,000 people showed up on Sunday morning uh, claiming uh, about one and a half million in foodstuffs from, uh, uh, from a charity. You know, the left, left side says, if we had some, such a robust market, why are we suddenly going broke? Um, can you comment on that? Is that really just sort of a, a lifestyle issue are, are Americans you know overspending um, they don't have a culture of, of savings like in Italy of long-term home ownership of kind of stability and and uh, rise in one single workplace I uh, I remember a phrase that I heard once during my one of my several uh, periods I spent in the US that is uh, for uh, for an Italian 100 years are nothing for an American 100 miles are nothing, right. <laughs> which means that you move quite often in your country. You, yeah. I mean, you, so you tend to sort of live more in, in the present situation you're living without creating this sort of uh, culture of savings or culture of whatever, which is, I mean, it's, it's absolutely fine as long as you have <laughs> more uh, important pillars that are solid uh, in yourself. Uh, I mean, yeah. then you can decide to have the economy running much faster uh, by putting more uh, uh, resources in. Uh, yeah. in daily well, consumption. it's like when you were speaking of Italy's wealth. I mean, one of the things I've learned after even just a few years living in Italy is that the the wealth of its cultural heritage is such that you feel rich mm -hmm. walking around. And, that's, and, a, that's a very good point. That's and, a very and there's good point. a there's a that has a psychological uh, positive effect on consumption. Mm -hmm. That you're not looking for beauty, you're not filling your home with beauty because it's all around you, it's all around you. You know, Americans have a have sometimes have a, a knack for collecting, you know, knickknacks or beautiful little things, putting in their home. Everyone does that for their homes, but and Italians do as well. But there's there's just some mitigation on consumption. The fact that you can walk around and feel like you're in a, you have the wealth of uh, three thousand, four thousand years of beauty all around you, and the landscape, and the landscape, and the landscape. Which, which which also helps. And somehow the weather, the fact that we you know we have uh, like three thousand biodiversities uh, uh, because of the wind. I mean, the, yeah, literally the answer is blowing in the wind in Italy. Yeah, well, America America has the same biodiversity. It just takes a long time to get from one <laughs> from, yeah. from no, one no, no. environment to the next. Yeah, yeah, I understand. That. That's yeah. very Here you can whip across the peninsula in a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> the distances are, 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 are much more uh, concentrated. Yeah. No, but I mean, I, I get your point. Uh, for sure, um, I, I, I personally think that what the lockdown has, has done, uh, for sure is one can more sort of interiorize things. Uh, for example, since we are talking among also a Christian group of people, I mean, I, yeah. I paradoxically, I found the, the liturgies I followed for Easter much more intimate and I focused much more on the texts that I yeah. could read and staying, you know, physically in my house. And so there are some things that you really have discovered. Yeah. Uh, but I personally think that uh, um, that we should, as soon as possible, uh, sort of liberal, liberate, give, give freedom to the energies that every single person has in terms of creativity, of entrepreneurship, uh, of, yeah. of you know creating a moment of aggregation because we do need that. We are a social <laughs> animal, <laughs> as a, so we, we when we reflect on the fact that we are created at the image and likeness of God. 
The likeness to be in likeness with God means that God is relation. It's the Father who loves the Son through the Holy Spirit. So we yeah. do have this relationship yeah. attitude uh, yeah. connaturate to our nature. Yeah, this is what so, they uh, call the economic trinity. I mean, yeah. it's, a, yeah. it's, it's a literally a mirror for us to look into and imitate. In terms yeah, of our, absolutely. Our relationship yes. and our harmony and our creativity and also salvation of each other through God. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, you absolutely. Know, the, the economy is where man and woman live their vocation. It's it's what um, it's what we do. Without without economies, we don't have callings. No, I mean there is, we're, we're there is angels, no real. We're just angels staring into God's face. Yeah. And it's development, not only economic development, it's human development. I mean, it's yeah. literally human development. So uh, yeah, so let's okay. let's really work to make now a this, quick restart well, possible. This is a great segue to my last two questions. Um, the first is. Just in terms of enterprise skills, I mean, we're gonna have to really re-enter with full force, but maybe in a different capacity. Um, as we mentioned with, there's gonna be a lot of creative destruction, a lot of, this is a time for entrepreneurs more than ever. What, what sort of basic enterprise skills do you think we need to, to recreate and re, um, re-inject fuel into the economy again? Not just in Italy, but any, anywhere, you know, just as... Yeah. Well, first of all, I think we, Worldwide, we need a good uh, um, way to, I mean, to, to, again, to express everybody's talents. I mean, yeah. so I think we, we literally need a, um, a, a form of worldwide uh, liberation of, of economic energies, um, which means uh, that, I mean, in a, in, a, in a world which is strongly digitalized and strongly connected, everybody's contribution has a sense, I mean, has, has, a, has a destination. So yeah. I think the first thing, I, I speak of myself as, a, as an official of a, of, a, of a government, what we have to do, we have to stream energies. I mean, not, not to be ourselves those who uh, put uh, uh, all the policies and all the uh, uh, options and decisions from the top. I mean, we have to stream energies. So. Uh, the energy comes from uh, from from the persons that form a community, and then what's up to us. So I I, I wouldn't say myself any prior. As I mentioned before, in Italy we do have some um, uh, drivers of growth which do have a sense. I mean, do, do yeah. mean something because uh, sustainable development through uh, wave energy, through uh, electric mobility, and so do have a sense. So we should try and, and stream those energies in, in a positive way, and and also uh, as as we mentioned before, investing in in uh, free time, in in, in knowledge, in uh, landscape, in tourism. These are, are important drivers that I think yeah. in, a, in in a century yeah. that will move billion of people from one side to the other of, of the world. It's it's important. Yeah. One of the books, old books, that one of my favorite books, which everyone um, has pretty much read, is. Uh, Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. Mm-hmm. Have you read that book? No, I haven't. But okay, I you should. You should. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a classic and kind of American uh, uh, leadership literature. And he creates this quadrant of, of human activity, which he divides into four parts. In the top left and right, he has um, highly important and urgent. Mm-hmm. And then the top right, he has highly important and non-urgent. Mm-hmm. And in the bottom left and bottom right, he has uh, not so important, but urgent. <laughs> and right. then we have our uh, not so important and not urgent. Right. And he, um, you know, he's always speaking to these very proactive, you know, uh, Stephen Covey created the word uh, proactivity. It's his word. And so he's dealing with a lot of busy, busy man or businessmen. I mean, that's where they get their busyness from. Always going out, creating, doing, they're very choleric, just, you know, forging through the jungle, clearing, creating, creating high rises. And he says, you know, what I have to teach these men is that they need to stop and focus on, on the very important, but not urgent. And in that little quadrant, he, he collected a, you know, a series of, um, of observations, which he whittled down into some core advices. One thing he said, the first thing we need to, to focus on is relationship building. Mm-hmm. We need to connect to people personally, yeah. Take time to talk to them when we're doing. It's very Italian. It's always, uh, so I love it about Italian. Does they always take time to get to know you? 
Yeah. And it wasn't, it's just, it wasn't just sort of a transactional relationship, it was getting to know people. Um, and he said, and that, of course, that, built, that builds dividends, you know, people of trust above all. Uh, and then he said, you know, you, you need to just sit around and, and daydream. Mm -hmm. Especially for entrepreneurs, that's super important just to kind of to listen to the wind, uh, um, watch the birds fly by and let the imagination lift up to, you know, the high heavens. Covey was a religious man. He was Mormon, um, but he knew the, the um, art of contemplation and allowing room for God to inspire you, even through the, the simplest observations, just turning the mind off. Um, and then lastly, uh, connected to that, he says, we need to make time for an examination of conscience. Um, you know, to, to, to rectify and, and to, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. not just to see where we're vicious or malicious or evil in any capacity, but really just to, to reflect on our weaknesses. Um, and entrepreneurs sometimes are overconfident. They go out and just build, 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 do, 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 make, 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 create, 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 and then the millions come in. And then in, in, in the, there's these black swan moments that everything comes crashing down. Yeah. And they haven't examined their weaknesses. They haven't prepared for, like, ants for the winter. Um, or some rainy day philosophy. But he says, above all, we need, we need to sit down and reflect, and examine our conscience where we're going and to protect ourselves from our own weaknesses. Yeah. And if anything, during these moments, these six weeks of isolation, uh, um, the choleric entrepreneurs are you know, going crazy, bouncing off the walls, but they're looking, they're, they're able to reflect much more. Mm -hmm. at, at, least, um, at least they're reaching out to their clients, trying to keep relations going. Um, they're sitting around, you know, in their in their study or in their on their balcony, you know, dreaming about what their business could do when this is all over, and then building a, a plan of attack to overcome the, this drama. Yeah. I mean, at, at the end of the day, as we said, we are so naturally inclined to be social. Yeah. But also, we are explorers. I mean, and what's more fascinating than exploring another person? And, and the yeah. eyes of another person, which are the windows of the soul. I mean, yeah. that, that's, that's an adventure. I mean, that's really an adventure of an explorer. So uh, I think that taking time, reflecting, and then spending time with someone trying to enter into this person's emotions, inspirations, yeah. dreams, is, is such a fantastic adventure. <laughs> so just that one concluding question, you know, having said all this, speaking about the Italian economy, its robust industries, it's special, um, it's, uh, you know, special uh, uh, heritage and it's, um, it's real um, power to create. I think Italy has always been known as a creator. Um, you know, anyone looking from Italy from the outside, think of uh, Italy as, just, as this basket of, of creativity and, and, um, and dreaming. Um, and that makes for entrepreneurs. I mean, that's, that's a core, virtue of entrepreneurs they sit around and dream but they also do they take responsibility so in this time is there any one italian entrepreneur that that uh, that sticks out maybe just for his um not just more his industry but also his moral sensitivity and care for his customers and businesses that's a, that's a good question i have a lot of, of good examples on on that uh, but if i can tell you something that i, I really i mean I was really surprised um, uh, to read about is mm -hmm. um, is an example that uh, um, uh, that somehow uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Riccardo Maria Monti, he's been for a long time uh, uh -huh. president of uh, of ICE, uh, which is the Italian trade agency. Well, yeah. Riccardo uh, is now uh, committed in helping uh, sort of young Napolitans. Uh, to um, start uh, new uh, enterprises exactly in those fields in which Naples is more, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, inclined to, so uh, linked to landscape, uh, linked to uh, food. So it's, it's a kind of uh, uh, person who uh, has developed a lot in, in important enterprises, but now goes back to his territory to say, hey, look, uh, be yourself, be creative in, in, in developing your skills and you will find uh, uh, new horizons. So I think Ricardo is a good example, but I yeah. haven't. Uh, yeah, I, there's an entrepreneurial hero I've um, come to know. Um, I've, I've always enjoyed his products. Um, 
sometimes they're quite expensive. I don't always buy them. It's uh, Giovanni Rana, the pasta mm -hmm. maker. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, and, you know, he a uh, headline came out about you know three or four weeks ago that he increased all of his employee salaries by twenty five percent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Unbelievable. I mean, he took he took a I think a significant pay reduction himself, or actually eliminated his salary from this time in order to finance that. And that's someone, you know, whether he's a good Christian or not, or a true moral spirit or not, um, that was definitely um, a wonderful, wonderful um, gesture. Yeah. And then, you know, as I did a little more research, there was, uh, this is only about four weeks ago, so surely the figures increased since, but there, there was about 130 million given to private charity amongst corporations and business leaders. Yeah, and, I know the son, Gianluca, they also have some good investments in the US, by the way. I mean, there is a yeah. president that ran also in the US. Yeah. They're very good people from Verona, let's say from the good uh, Northeast, yeah. uh, with a strong root in Catholic tradition. Yeah, they're good people. So uh, Yeah, but I mean, it just shows the go that people that, uh, that cr criticize, you know, the 1% or 2% or 3% of however wealthy they are, but without their wealth, they wouldn't be able to give charitably. Exactly. Especially in times of crisis, because the government's only given out 600 euros to entrepreneurs and or freelancers. You can and redistribute as long as you create wealth. Exactly. That's the story. Yeah. No, no wealth, no wealth to throw around. I mean, that's a basic, yeah. basic mantra. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Excellent. Well, Federico, so wonderful to have you with us today, and you're a fountain of wisdom, as usual. And, um, you know, God bless you during this time. Stay safe. You know, work for the Italian economy. We, we need you. We need your leadership more than ever. And um, hope that you can help uh, underwrite policies and vision um, to make the eighth um, largest economy the largest in the world. This is going to be the biggest Rocky Balboa comeback ever. <laughs> I believe it. Thank you very much, Michael, and, and thanks to everybody. Maybe the only request I have for you is to pray for us uh, and to uh, ask the Holy Spirit uh, to um, to sort of uh, accompany us to take the right decisions because yeah. uh, urgency is not always a good advisor in, <laughs> in decisions. So one has to take them with solid basis and keeping in mind the current urgencies, but also the mid and long-term needs. So. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much yeah. for this conversation. Yeah, Thank and you know, pray for us at the Acton Institute. We are, we are, um, we our mission has never been more critical. Like, yeah. you know, we fight for not just natural and civil liberties, but above all, economic liberty. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. as we said before, it's it's where vocation is played out. Absolutely, absolutely. And yeah. when, when vocation is, is not played out, there's there's despair, uh, self destruction. Um, it's a living hell, literally. But it is the moment when we are like contracting ourselves, like you know the the mole. So then you can go far farther. So uh, I think it's a good effect of contraction to then expand more. It, it and, you know, exactly. Exactly. But in a in a in a Christian way, not okay. in a Maoist way. No, not the Mao's uh, <laughs> idea. Yeah. No, with Christ, there's always hope, uh, and that that uh, that digs deep into our entrepreneurial spirit and our creativity. And ability to take risk and we will have to take risk in the coming weeks absolutely yeah, yeah. that's for sure yeah yeah okay okay thank you very right. much thank you. Yeah, keep in right. touch and god bless you all and uh okay. and talk to you soon uh, again okay. yeah thank you again all right bye bye, bye, -bye.